All right, so, so far so good. We are dealing with likes and we've just created a table uh, to add our likes there. So if we reach this far, we are ready to move to the next level. All right, so very little left to be done. The like.php page is probably done unless we get some errors of any kind, okay? Uh, also, we need, uh, we need to give it something else here. I almost forgot. There are three things we need to know when a like, the like button is clicked. The first thing is who clicked the button. And the next thing is what are they clicking on, right? So in order to identify what they're clicking on, this is the info we've given it here, the ID of the thing they're clicking on. But we need to know what type of thing it is. It's a post in this case, since we have many things. But we also need to know who actually clicked. So in order to do that, we have to get the user, the current user's um, session ID. So let's copy that session ID from another file where we wrote it, so I don't have to remember it. Uh, where is that? Like.php. So at the very end here, I'll put a comma and I'll add that one there as well. Okay, so we have all the data that we need and the rest is easy. So let's go to our post class. This one in classes, is it? No, this one in classes, yes. So let's create a function in here and this is a public function. So public function. Now this function is like post because that's what we named it uh, in the like right there. Mm -hmm. So I can simply copy this instead to make my work easier instead of remembering things. There we go. So let me put that there like so. So we have a function called like post. And the first thing here is the ID. So we remove all these gets here. We don't need them. And that true. We just need to know this is the ID, this is the type. And we have my book user ID. Like so. Mm -hmm. So now we just need to know where to take these, uh, this data. Now, as I have already stated here, we've already sanitized our data. We've made sure that we've taken precaution to make sure that we cannot be hacked using this. So no need to do that here. We are trusting that this data is good and secure. So what we will do is create an SQL. And I'm going to say in this SQL, since this is one like, okay? So the first thing we need to do is to update uh, but first of all, let's save. I don't know what comes first, but uh, let's try this one first. So in here, we can update the number of likes in posts. Okay. So how do we identify the post? We know it's a post because of the type and we have the post ID. So let's come here. So since the type is the post, okay, it's post. Mm. So instead of uh, profile, I think we're going to say user. We'll use the table names so that uh, things become uh, easier. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we add type, in, in type, if we just add an S at the end, it becomes the table name. Posts, users, comments. Right? So let's do just that. So if I say uh, update. Now, I don't want to say update posts because this could be a profile or something else. So I'm going to say update type. And remember, we need to add that S at the end. So we can't just add S there, then it changes the, vari the variable name. So to avoid that, we put this variable name by itself in uh, brackets like so, okay? And make sure you use double quotes outside, otherwise this won't work. So update types, this is the table name. Mm -hmm. So whatever that is. Set likes is equal to likes plus one. Yes, you can do mathematics directly into the query. Limit one. Now, where do we set this? We haven't, <laughs> excuse me. We haven't told, told it where to do this. So we are incrementing the likes column by one where 
where what are we looking for we have this id here now this becomes a problem here because depending on the type in here we have post id in users we're going to have users id hmm. so i guess what we could do instead is create a different query depending on the type so let's come back here and say if type is equal to post right so so much for the uh the clever method here we had used to do this we don't need to do that anymore because we know this one goes to posts so we'll say update posts set likes is equal to likes plus one where the post id is equal to that id we have over there okay so once we do that we can evoke the db and say db save i forgot the arrow sql like so so we are done so increment so we can put some comments here just so we can remember increment the posts table and then we can go down here and say increment the or save likes details now we are going to copy exactly what's here and simply change the the query so the like here is going to be like this mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a way to append uh, to the, the existing thing. Oh yeah, there's one more thing I forgot. Uh, let me go to likes. So the thing is this, if for example, I am the first person to like this post, so the record for the likes for this will not exist in the, uh, in the database. So I have to create it. But if I'm not the first person to like it, the record is going to already exist. So I don't want to create a new record. I just want to add to that record. So I need to know whether I'm updating or I'm simply creating from scratch. So in order to do that, I need to try and read from the database to make sure that the, the record actually already exists. So to do that, we're going to say select select likes now the reason i'm putting likes and not all is because i just want to get the folder for this column likes that's it select likes from likes likes is the table name as well okay so select likes from likes where mm -hmm. now where the type is equal to post, right? Where the type will be equal to post and we're going to use the double ampersand and post ID or ID, here it's content ID actually, content ID. Content ID is equal to whatever ID we've uh, supplied, limit one. So here, instead of save, we're going to read. And this is our result. Result is equal to, okay? So if we actually get a result, then it means uh, there is already a record. So if, I'm going to ask if this is an array, result. If this result is an array, then we have something. If it's not, then we are starting from scratch. So let's do the one that starts from scratch first. Mm -hmm. So we're going to say insert into. We have to remove all this. It's unnecessary. So we're going to say insert into likes. So that's the, uh, the table name. 
and we're going to have our columns in here and we're going to have our values in there so what are our columns what are the columns that we need to update the id will auto update so we need to update the type and the content id first so let's do that now so type content id and also of course we're going to add some likes so i'm simply going to copy all this over to make sure that uh, they're in order and put them there and what i will do is type some things here put some inverted commas like show uh, to make them variables like that mm -hmm. so we already have type we already we don't have content id here we've supplied it as id so i'm going to remove that content part and just leave it as id because that's the one that contains the value and likes so likes is what we don't have so let's create that so how do we create that? Now, what I want to do is create an array. So I'm going to say R like this and do that so that it, it adds something in there. So the first thing I need to add in here is the uh, my ID, okay? Mm hmm right that's my id so i'm going to add my book id like so and if you want to be very specific you can even add when did this user uh i want this to be robust you don't need to do this but i want to show you how to do it in case you actually want to know all those things so when did the user uh like this if you want to be very specific so I can add another entry and say date. We want to create the date and time. So I'm going to put a string in here that creates the date that I want. I want to put the year, the dash, the month, dash, the day. And then I want to put the hours and the minutes and the seconds right so this is the time of day right now when this is happening so i'm getting my uh, id and what time i actually liked so the reason i've added two of these is to show you that you can actually add more here you can add more details that you want uh, that doesn't matter you can add as many details as you want so now when i'm done with this array what i want to do is convert it to a string so i want it to be I want to convert it to a string so that later on when i grab that string i can convert it back into an array and read the data so the best way to do that is to use what is called json so <clears throat> i'm going to say likes is equal to json encode so we are encoding the data now what json simply is is a javascript object notation so what it means it's it's a way of converting an array into a string that's all it is so this array the data will be converted into one long string and then saved now the reason we convert the array into a string is because we can't save an array into a database it's not possible in the database we only save strings even if it's an image you've saved it's a string so we must convert the array into a string and then later on we can change it back to an array when we want <coughs> excuse me and also on top of that json is used when you're transferring data from one computer to another because you cannot transfer arrays from one computer to another you can only transfer zeros and ones which is a string so json becomes useful in that case so enough for uh, json just do it like this and it's going to convert this json into that so we'll see how this looks like in the database then you understand so likes is there and we can save it there this is why the likes column has text because we will be converting arrays into strings so this is how we do it when uh, when this is the first entry okay so we've added everything we want now let's copy this data and add it when this is a second entry and not the first one 
Hmm? There we go. So we're adding this entry right there. Now, the first thing, the thing that happens is if there's already an entry, it means this person, it's possible that this person has already liked this thing. So if they already have, we are not supposed to allow them to do that again. So it's easy to, to check if they have because we are going to convert the result back from a JSON string into an array. So to do that is very simple. We're going to say likes again is equal to JSON decode. Since we are decoding now, we are getting it from JSON to an array. So we're going to say result likes. This is all we got from there. It's the likes themselves, right? So there we go. So we've decoded those likes back. So now we have an array full of likes. So all we need to do is add to this array. Instead of creating a new array, we can simply add to this at the very end. Okay. But first, before we do that, let's check to see if our, uh, uh, what's this? Our user is inside this array. Now, one mistake I have made here is that uh, this array will contain information like uh, on location zero, there will be this username. On location one, there will be the date. And then if I add some more data, I'm going to have uh, another user ID and then another piece of uh, date. This is not what I want. I want arrays inside an array, okay? Array inside an array. So what I was supposed to do here is once I finish adding whatever list of things I want to add here, I'll add this entire thing into another array. So I'm going to say array two. Okay, like so. Is equal to array, like so. So here I can have many details about this particular user, the user ID, the date that they liked, the color of the, whatever it is, the time of day or whatever it is, I can add as many parameters as I want. And then after that, I can simply add that to this array over here. 